Appamada's programmes and facilities are supported through your generosity. Your support really does make a huge difference. You'll find a link for contributions on the website at appamada.org forward slash contribute. Thank you so much. Vast is the robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction. Wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, thus harmonizing all being. Vast is the robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction. Wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, thus harmonizing all being. Vast is the robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction. Wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, thus harmonizing all being. So I guess I will begin with my usual question before entering a period of silence. Does anyone have any burning question about their current status? Uh, where they're at today. Okay, then we can begin with a 30 minute period of silent sewing. Uh, I will switch my camera to so that y'all can see what I'm working on. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be here.
John, I have a question. Yes. Um, I'm about to sew the straps to the rakasu. Um, do I hide the knot sort of just underneath the edge so the knot isn't visible? So you're attaching, uh, you said you're attaching the straps to the, the body of the rakasu? Yeah. So in this case, um, I don't know if it's explicitly mentioned, but my memory serves. <clears throat> you don't use a knot. Instead, you use the, uh, of the, the knotless methods, you use the, uh, the one that includes multiple loops where you go back and forth uh, for two or three stitches. And that serves both to have uh, an aesthetically attractive um, it's both aesthetically attractive as well as being extra sturdy. It reinforces, uh, in particular, uh, so where's my top left corner? So this is, I'm trying to learn. Okay, so these are top left corners, mm -hmm. um, or top left, top right. Um, so these outside points and these inside points, because you're going to have the two straps side by side, right? Yeah. So the outermost and the innermost, those in particular need to be reinforced. So doing the um, the knotless start and knotless termination, uh, those are um, good ways to to do that in one one go. Okay, thank you. Now let me do let me give me one moment to read and make sure I'm not misleading you, but I believe <clears throat> It is not clear, but that is what my memory serves because it's you do definitely want that reinforcement. Yeah, it's. I think it says on the instructions, reinforce the points of strains on the yeah. uh, where yeah, the strap that. edges join the rakasu with ex extra stitches. So if I'm doing the Namu Kabutsu stitch, I just go over exactly the same point of the stitch. That's right. Yeah. Um, have you done this style of knotless um, sewing? In the Rakasu so far? I um I don't remember. <laughs> okay. No, I've certainly done knotless um somewhere. Uh, I think that uh, maybe in the squares were knotless. Um or I've hidden knots inside seams. I think either of those. I'm still figuring out this new camera situation, so if you'll bear with me on that. Get a new piece. So no knot and right. So, so you normally would come up through uh, the left corner of the stitch and then down through the bottom. What I'm going to do instead, uh, let me actually use this line that's drawn here. So I'm going to go down. I'm not going to start on the back side uh, or coming up. I'm actually going to start going in. So going in where I want the bottom right corner of that stitch to be. Yep. And this assume that this is the rightmost strap on the rightmost corner. Yep. So let me get all this mess out of the way. So I'm going to pull until I have maybe two or three inches. Uh, I guess what is that? Uh, 30 centimeters, is that 30? Whatever. It's about about that much. Yeah, around. I think 30 centimeters is, is about 12 inches, so maybe not that much. <laughs> Very good. Uh, what, three times 2.5, uh, so 7.5 centimeters yeah. roughly. Um, you want to leave loose, maybe even four uh, inches. And so you have, and you're going to leave this loose for the entire time that you're sewing. Uh, and you'll see why in a bit. So you just hold it in place and try not to, to catch it in any of your... I'm not gonna fuss the spacing too much. Hmm. 
And I'm going all the way through because that's the way it probably would be done on your, um, yeah. when you're doing the straps. It's hard to go through that much fabric. So once you have gotten to a third, I'm going to pull it all the way through and I'm going to flip on the back. And this is much harder when you're doing it with multiple layers of material, but this is two layers and it'll approximate the effect at least. So I'm going to look, I think I'm in shot. Yes, I'm going to look at, to, I'm going to try to go just one thread of the underlying fabric away and come back up. And so I'm not quite where I wanted it. And so I'm coming up from the bottom right corner, which is not, which is reverse of the ordinary direction of sewing. But when I pull, there's at least one thread there to keep to allow this reversal to happen. And then I'm going to sew, uh, I'm just going to sew the Namuke Butsu backward. So what this does is this will end up giving you these three stitches will have three layers each. Ah, uh, um, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. In both directions. Yeah. Oh, perfect. You could Thanks. probably get away with just doing two, frankly. This is, I need to figure this camera situation out a little better. So can I ask a question, John? About what yes. you, so you did the, the three stitches um, right to left, I guess? Right. And then you did that one stitch underneath. And now mm -hmm. you're, you're going back doing three more. Namu Kiebutsu's going back to where you started. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. And okay. I'm coming, and instead of normally coming up at the top left and going down into the bottom right uh -huh. of the stitch, I'm doing the reverse. I'm coming up in the bottom right. In the bottom. Okay, cool. I, yeah, I'm going to have to change the orientation of this camera so that it's much clearer to you when I say right that you're actually seeing right or is that mirrored for y'all is it just mirrored for me that, Do that, one, that? that looks good yeah i mean it's right to left and um so there the stitches are right over the other stitches that's right okay and when you do this you'll come back to the very beginning and so i've still got that starter stitch that was a down originally that i'm holding uh -huh. with my left thumb and so now I'm going to go in at the top and I'm going to again reverse. So this, I want to again come up on this top left. Come towards yourself a little bit. Um, yeah, the good, good, good. Thank you. So I'm, so I just finished that last one by going in at the top left and I'm going to come back out at the top left again. And this is that second reversal. So now we're going the the comfortable familiar direction uh, for right-handed people at least. Uh, again, we're going down in the bottom right mm -hmm. and up in the top left. So at this point you can sew you're, you're, you'll be sewing normally and you'll sew all the way until you get to the end. You'll do the same process of reversing at the end and uh, I'm going to just finish this one off here. I'm going to. That's very secure. That will never come out. No. Yeah, this, this <laughs> will be, uh, this would make it that sport garment that I always talk about. <laughs> it not be. So what I'm going to do with this loose in that we've had, that we've had this entire time. This was what I started just going in on the bottom right of the stitch. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread my needle. Oh, so you need the need the left uh, thread. Yeah. Yes, and this is um, something I was reminded of recently as an uh, as an option, and I think it is superior especially on the start to the pulling tight method. There still will be a pulling tight phase, but I will show you that here in a moment. And I'm going to go in, am I on? Okay. I'm going to go in on the top left as though this were a normal stitch, but I am not coming out the back. 
So I'm going to be burying this oh. in between. So it's like, it's as though these yeah, yeah. stitches have created a very tight, secure little tunnel, lots of friction um, that will help hold the thread in place. And you won't, you should not have raveling from this thread because there's so much friction through these tight little stitches. And I did a, yeah, that's pretty good. I did come out through the back. Don't do that. But yeah. that'll be much easier to do if you're working with, what, six, seven layers of fabric at that point? Yeah. And then once you've gone under at least a minimum of three stitches is kind of my minimum. You can pull it through, pull it taut, and then pull it slightly over tight. And then when you cut close to the fabric, when you cut close to the fabric, it should then disappear. Yeah. So you have um, two centimeters of, of thread that are held secure by these um, Thank you. Like 12 wow. stitches now. Great, thank you so much. You're welcome. Was that clear? Yes, I'm sure. glad I asked. <laughs> <laughs>Can I ask you a question, John? Yes, please. Um, I'm doing the neck piece. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've pinned the long sides together. Yes. Uh, well, you can see like that. Um, yeah. uh, and I was going to start to stitch it, which it says in back stitch. Do I, do I leave the... Uh, 1.5 centimeter hem and just just stitch from the uh, um so to stitch through the hip the the 1.5 seam allowance or not yeah I'm remembering how it inverts because this is one of those that we sew it inside out first and then invert it so i've read forward from the step that you're at to the turn inside out phase after you've attached the interfacing fold in half end to end so in this way with seam showing pin line to line <clears throat> so just outside of line toward edge cotton thread running stitch so you have a tube like this that you're folding this, it seems to me that there, that will then be inverted in the next step. And in that phase, it would not matter if you have sewn through the 1.5. So I believe you can go, you can continue through the 1.5. Oh, okay. Right, so I've just sewed through the whole lot. Want me to confirm that one more moment, because you have to sew, that's after attaching it to the straps. Yes. So this, um, you can sew through all the way through the seam allowance. Right. This will end up buried between um, the straps and then fully buried whenever the neck piece is finally inverted, which that one was particularly mind bending, even for, uh, I have a decent sense of spatial reasoning, but the inverting the neck piece in the straps uh, is was kind of mind bending for me. <laughs> I think Trudy was doing that last time, so I think yeah. it, it looked okay. like a special origami. It really is. It, it, it doesn't. It feels like you're going to tear something until all of a sudden it looks the way you expect it to. Very, very, <laughs> very strange. Right. Well, I'll wait to get to that bit. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> One thing at a time. Yeah.
Um, and John? Yes. Um, I am working on the frame. Okay. And I've just done the first pinning of the ears down. Okay. And I want to check I understand the next instruction correctly. So then it says turn the corners right side out. Yes. Keep the ears in the correct place as you remove the pins, match the two chalk lines and pin. So so it's correct. So I'm I've pinned, but I'm not going to do any sewing. I'm just going to turn it inside out, hold it all together and repin it. That's right. Yes. Okay. And Uh, the important uh, thing on this is that um, I think before my hiatus, I showed the the that on the front you want the long pieces. You want the ear to have been folded this this direction towards the long side, which gives the impression that the long edge is on top of the short edge. That's that is the the aim of when it says keeping um, keeping the direction of the dog ears correct. It is trying to to encourage this effect of this top piece looking like it is on top of this bottom piece, despite it actually being the same piece of fabric. Mm -hmm. So that is um, what you're trying to do. If that helps you visualize what you're doing as you're as you're going, and uh, I think. Well, in the inversion step, that is when you will that is when you will start to the the free end, the end where the two pieces come together. <clears throat> that's going to become your top left corner. And so it is done with that in mind. Um, so there's only you could face a a uh, frame piece. You can face it towards you or away from you, except that this must be in the top left. So once it's an inverted, you'll know which corner is going to be your top left corner from where these two ends are. And that right. can help you make sure that these are oriented correctly. Because on the back, well, that's important because on the back, it is the reverse. The long pieces look like they're under the short sides. Okay. I, I feel like I've mm, overly complicated the issue. Um, that's fine. Thank you. That's, you know, that's helpful. Try inverting and see yeah, if it, I'll give it a go. makes visual sense to you from there. Lovely. And I'm assuming it's just a bit fiddly unpinning, taking pins out underneath where you're working and you just sort of muddle through it and it's yes. fiddly, but, you, but it's okay. You assume correct. Yes. <laughs> Great. <laughs> John? Yes. Can I ask you a really, really basic question? Sure. I think I have the same chalk marker that everyone else does. Okay. And I don't know what I'm doing wrong when I mark. I think I'm nervous about whether or not it's showing up on the fabric and I do ch -ch -ch -ch, and then it's like, oh God, where is the actual mark? Is it in mm -hmm. the middle of that mess? How do you do that? Sure. Yeah, that's. Uh, do, do you just make one mark and just trust that it's going to show up? Well, no. What I actually prefer is I make, I attempt to make one mark and see if it's dark enough. If it is not dark enough, I will follow up and do another mark over the exact spot. And I use less pressure than. Uh, because what happens? What is when you say cha cha cha? You mean that kind of pulling, uh, uh, jumping? Like it's, well, like it's just mark, mark, mark. You know, it's stupid. Um, just to be sure, you know, just be sure <laughs> that that I'm getting it right. You know, I guess it's just a nervous tick. What is I feel valuable and important is that you 
who have, you're not going to be making this mark and handing it off to someone else and needing them to understand what you have marked. So if, as long as the mark is made and then you can put a ruler up to it and see that it is still straight, that is still true. And even if it jumps around a bit, if you know where that mark should be, you can navigate from there. Um, perhaps if you take two or three months away, you might confuse yourself. But if you're sewing continuously, you can be confident that I, I made this mark. I know that it's a little wonky, but I know what I was trying to communicate to myself, to, to future me. To demonstrate the actual kind of way that I do it, I don't hold it. I hold it about 45 degrees. I try to hold the, uh, the, the starting point of the fabric as I pull away from it. And this helps uh, prevent deformation of the fabric. This is invisible. Okay, so, and I just pull along and I'm trying to, I'm keeping an eye that the fabric is not pulling too much. When it pulls too much, the, 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 the popping motion, that's the fabric trying to correct being pulled too far. That's the, the, the fabric is pulling itself underneath the, the tip, and that's what causes that popping motion. So I just make it very gently, and I'm bending over now to inspect. That's probably good enough, but I'm going to go again to make sure that it is indeed very visible. And one important note is that the pencils might be the same. Not all of the chalks are the same. Some chalks deposit more easily, some wipe off more easily, some, um, there's some variance there. So what you might do is you might try to purchase new chalk if you have problems with the chalk itself. Yeah, I think it's me and not the marker. I, and where I'm really, what I'm really talking about is at the, the crosshairs, like when I'm saying this is where I start this line, the line ends up, it's the little short ones where it's like, okay, here I start. The, the line ends up being fat instead of when I do this, instead of precise and thin. So what I'm doing is I'm going back and remeasuring and saying, okay, the real mark is right in the middle of this big fat mess. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I, it's taking a lot of extra time and uh, angst. So anyway, that's helpful, especially the part about holding the fabric really taut. And I need to just I need to just trust that the mark is going to show up once when I'm marking a, a tiny little mark here. Yeah, it, I, I understand uh, when I first when I did my first one, I had a lot of tension around, um, you know, on, on day one day when I'm measuring, I would make a point. So I'm always going to measure, try to center the chalk line right on the measurement with the ruler every time so they know the center of the chalk line is the the point of truth and then one day i got in my head that i was going to do um the chalk line should fall outside of where i don't know i overcomplicated it myself um and i uh as though it were an engineering project which uh it's not it, we don't need this to have you know a precision tuned fighter aircraft engine you know um this is a a practice garment and what we see when we are experiencing that, or when I experience that tension, when I'm sewing, I'm seeing a reflection of my own uh, focus on details that may not be what's really important in the matter, um, which may not be what you see, but it's a reflection of practice, of my own practice, that I'm caught up in a detail that's not critical. It is causing me tension, and it is not going to make a visible difference in the garment where you're sitting where you have not made the garment you may have a harder time trusting that but um that it is going to look fine in the end um but for me it was definitely a reflection of this perfectionism uh in a, in a big way so perhaps that's simply your practice point that, that's really helpful and it's almost a philosophical issue at this point <laughs> <laughs> well the whole the whole rakasu obviously or arguably is in its own way uh, Thank you very much, John. Yeah, thanks, Mom. John? Yes. 
I've just finished pinning um, my face to my frame, the front. Can mm -hmm. I just show this to you before I start sewing to see if it looks? Um, let me turn my yeah. turn off. I think that's better. Thank you. It's a lot of pins, I guess. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. That's about the right number of pins. Um, you, I'm, I'm not used to seeing the angled pinning, uh, so that does give me some pause. But the the pinning. I copied closeness. that in. The, I copied that from the book. And the I mean, book had some angle ones and some straight ones, so I just got started with the angles and I, I do think it's personal preference it doesn't make a big deal i don't see any uh major puckering i don't see any uh i don't see any bubbles that would come out good frequency it looks good to me uh the exactly. side i don't have any uh things showing in the back so that's good yeah that's that was the next question yeah there looks like there might be on that side there uh is yeah yes that side there might be some tension. Um, you might uh, get, take a ruler to it and take a ruler to both sides, just kind of, and see that everything is still square uh, and take okay. your square to it too. And I think that side might be worth repinning. That might've been the first side that you pinned and then okay. the other two kind of, or the other three fell into place with and some it, tension. Is it, is it the outside that looks like it might not be square or the inside? It's the that bottom there there's yeah, some I waviness see. on that bottom side. Yeah. yeah, I see that now. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, sorry, John, I immediately have questions. <laughs> Great timing. Okay. <laughs> and that's sorry. Um I think I've done it. I think I've unpinned and repinned. So I'm here. Mm -hmm. The only thing I'm not sure of is um, I think it's probably fine, but if I if I hold most of the sides, if I hold them sort of taut, the um, the two edges at the bottom here fall pretty much together. But one of, or two of the sides, it's that's not as true. They're not far, far off, but they're not. That that can still be eased uh, pretty okay. easily. What I would do is take a. Uh, a measure. <laughs> and, uh, let me get the exact number. I think it's 4.2 centimeters is the expected. Uh, once like uh, post after the seam allowance has been folded under and sewn down, I think 4.2. Oh, yeah. If anyone knows that number, feel free to holler it. Um, That's helpful. Thank you. That's a good check. I'm. I don't think I'm more than a couple of mil out yeah it's like four four point one yeah that should be good then um you what you might um do keep an eye out uh mm. it's it's it, it is perfectly acceptable um sometimes your uh, on one side you will have uh four and the other side you'll have four point two and mm -hmm. any time that happens, it's much easier to accidentally have a showing stitch on the back, um, in particular here on the back side, because you sew the front first, and you're being really careful about your seam allowance and where the folds are are falling from based on your uh, your pinning, and it's very easy to uh, to have these be shorter, and that, that is okay. Uh, Anna right. and I have talked about this. It's totally reasonable, but it's much easier to accidentally have those poked through. Um, oh, I'm sorry, for, for this side, yeah, just be mindful of, of sewing all the way through, um, which is good guidance in general, but if you, if they're different lengths, it's much easier to do that. Okay, let's see, and then, I don't think I understand the 
next instruction for sewing the corners. So it says using NKB stitch, start at chalk margin up to tip. So I figure I'm starting there at the seam allowance <coughs> heading up to the tip. Yes, that's right. Um, but then it says, so, ah, so just on edge of fold and then back. So is it that I'm, I'm sewing one, one side of the fold and then yes, yes. the other side? So I'll end up with two parallel lines of stitches. So you'll be sewing the, let me find what's not basted. Okay. So you'll be sewing, uh, we talked previously about which side looks like it's on top when the light hits yeah. it. Yeah. So you'll be sewing, um, starting from, like you said, uh, the other side of the, the seam allowance. And then you'll be sewing all the way along here on the top side. And uh, there, there are two options. Uh, we've we found that some people prefer to do one, two, or to do uh, a continuous one. So you will sew all the way along here, and then through the fabric, you will have a hidden little sneak across where you're coming onto the other side to continue uh, down. And uh, it doesn't need to be super tight or clean in there because this will be its final configuration. You don't need to worry about inverting the fabric anymore. Um, you just need to get from this side to that side. Alternatively, uh, some people prefer to start in the corner and sew out towards the seam allowance on both sides as two separate stitches. So um, I, I think Anne and I came down that we are preferring the single continuous stitch that crosses over. Uh, it's just simpler guidance. If that does give you any trouble though, remember that you could start in the corner and work your way out. The hardest part about this um, is that your handedness, right-handedness, left-handedness, you may sometimes be sewing with the fabric quite far from you or the, the I prefer to have, I'm, I'm this direction, I'm physically facing over here. I prefer to have as little fabric between me and what I'm sewing as possible, but mm -hmm. with hand, the sometimes you will have to sew like this with a lot of fabric close to you because you, mm -hmm. you're because you're prioritizing uh, the seam allowance, which uh, reverses every other. <clears throat> um, I think that makes sense then. And so, and I'm sewing, because I need to slip the face into the frame later, I'm, I'm only ever sewing three layers of fabric together. That's right. Okay. And uh, in the, the, the corner, I mentioned you don't have to be super careful about uh, what it's like you know, on the not showing side whenever you jump from one side to the other, that's why we cut those corners. So that's one of the reasons that we cut the corners of the interfacing. Well, if you remember that phase. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Lovely, okay. It sounds like you've got it. Um, let me know if you have questions. Thank you. John, I have another question yes so i don't know if maria can spotlight if she's still here there um i'm really i've un, i've sewn this and re-sewn this about three times so far and i'm getting the back edge quite messy um i'm struggling to really align it with the that row of stitching so is that level of messiness tolerable or should i take it out and do it again you can hardly, it's you, are you using a very close matching color? Yes. I'm having a hard time seeing it. Okay. Um, let me, I'll show you. It is really, um, yeah. 
I don't have one on me. It was, those were some of the messiest. Um, do you have your uh, a phone camera that you could email me the photo? Oh, sure. I think that would be, I don't think it's quite that messy. I, what a, I think what's confusing, what confused my eye at first is that it's, we are seeing two layers of, of stitches. We're seeing yeah. the original frame stitch and then the, the follow-up. And it just looks like you may have done slightly different angles. Uh, okay. I think you're, I, I'm, I think it looks fine. I don't, uh, no one's going to be scrutinizing this, I, this closely, I doubt. Uh, but I defer to what my, 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 my usual guidance is, is it's a comfort thing for you. If you want to redo it, uh, you're welcome to, I think it looks fine. Okay. That's great. Thank you so much. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Can I just ask a question, John? Yes, please. Um, I've sewn the seam of the neck piece and I've ironed it open. Um, and I'm now looking at attaching the interfacing, which I assume sort of attaches just to one of the open bits of the seam. Yes. The yes. edges, I don't know. Yes, I don't, I don't believe it matters greatly which. No, what matters most, um, did, when you ironed it, did you iron, do you have, um, do you have a crease on the, uh, the edges away from the seam? No. Do you have creases? No, okay. I just ironed iron the seam. So will you iron the seam? Um, and then also iron the entire piece so that you do end up with creases with the seam on center. Because that's what you're going to, those, um, those creased edges are what you're going to be aligning and centering. I suppose it's not critical that you have those creases, but it would, it's a tool. Um, you will want the interfacing to be, the, the seam to be on center and then roughly half of the interfacing on one side of the seam, roughly half of the interfacing on the other side of the seam. I don't think I understood that. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <clears throat> I thought you meant, I thought you meant uh, something like interfacing was a weird size. Let me get... Um... Well, the interfacing is here and it goes between the two 1.5 seams at the outside. Yes. And attaches to this center seam. Yes. The key is you want the center seam centered. Uh, you want the interfacing centered on the center seam is the, right. is the, is the key message here. What I was describing about folding the, with the creases was, is simply a tool for aligning that more easily. It's good to see you all again, and I'm glad Thank to you. Be, to Bye, begin. everybody. See you next time. Bye. Thank I'm you, not John. here next Sunday, but I'll be here after that. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>